All right, everybody, welcome back to the Move Podcast, brought to you each and every day this summer by Ketone IQ, made by HVMN. Talking about stage 16 and what a stage it was. Alain, where'd we go? Stage 16, Passy to Comblou. Passy to Comblou. I mean, that was the least excited I've been the whole time. <laughs> I mean, it was, just, yeah, I like the longer ones where it's like there's a da some dashes and some mm -hmm. does in it. You know, that one, uh, uh, Anyways, for for unexciting as that was, I'm I'm kind of speechless. And this performance by Jonas Vingegaard was so exceptional. And by the way, before we get into it, we are also joined special guest today. Johan Brunil is here. Looks like he and I got together and um, coordinated our outfits. Look at that. Huh? <laughs> Is that weird? With both guys are wearing the shirt, and we're just saying to each other, "Seeing the douches." <laughs> <laughs> nothing like, strange here. Co co uh, yeah, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. But hey, nice work, Johan. But yes, what 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 a um, I, look. Nobody saw it coming. I mean, we we and I certainly I you know and two days ago I think I was rather bullish on Tade Pogachar's chances, and and I love to I, I love to be wrong on these things and just fess up and 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 what. Well, if you have, if you remember our last show between Spencer and I, we did say that Jonas sat up last year's time, final time trial and still almost won while going easy the last two kilometers. Now, I would have never guessed that domination that happened today, but uh, I think that Spencer and I thought that he probably had a better, up the upper hand in the time trial. And on a time trial that was, if you watched or if you can just look at the profile online, it's very difficult time trial. This is a time trial that should completely suit Tadej Pogacar. Let me just give you some stats. I mean, we're talking about how exceptional it was. He, he obviously won by, uh, what, over a minute and a half, um, which is, is, breaks down exactly to four seconds a kilometer, 2K an hour faster in terms of average speed. But what I looked at is I totaled up uh, Vingegaard's time and I totaled up Pogodar's time, um, and there's about 100 seconds difference. That is a difference. And, and again, just a reminder, we're talking about the hardest bike race in the world, one of the biggest sporting events in the world, uh, all these athletes are, are at optimal and peak performance and condition right now. Uh, Jonas Vingegaard was 5% better. I mean, 5% better in anything looks like a long ways. I mean, mm -hmm. I think, it, you know, I, I was doing some stuff recently and uh, the performances of Hussein Bolt came up and, and just how much better he was. And, and, and if you guys remember back to when Hussein Bolt was running the 100 meter dash, I mean, he basically could have turned around and run backwards the last 20 meters. He was 3% better. So this is 5% better. I mean, that is... It, it, it. it almost makes us question the, you know, all of our criticism thus far. I mean, it was, was Jonas and Team Jumbo, maybe this is a question for Johan, were they that confident in this time trial that they said, yeah. you know what, let's just play defense here. Um, don't go full gas, keep them within sight, keep them within reach. And uh, we got this in the time trial. Johan, what do you, what do you think? Johan, I want to get your thoughts. Uh, Johan, let me get just pause right there. Uh, George yeah. might have to remind you. A little bit of business. Today's show brought to you by Element. You hear us talk about it all the time. George and I and JB climbed. You heard me right. JB as well climbed Independence Pass yesterday. I was sweating like a fool. But have no fear. Bottles are full of Element. 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium, no sugar, no gluten. No BS. What a way to replace and hydrate yourself on a long effort like that. Uh, our listeners get a free Element sample pack with any order. Uh, if you head on over to drinklmnt.com slash the move. Again, that's drinklmnt.com slash the move. You know what else was impressive about uh, the JB running into you at the top? I, I timed that out well. That was amazing timing <laughs> on your part. But, uh, uh, you know, the downhill's fast, and we, we were not hitting the brakes. At one point, you know, we we're almost down, and I turned around, and you were still there. That was terrifying. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was very I, impressed. At the top, I get this. I won't derail this too much. But at the top of, of the pass, I look at Lance, and I go, how hardcore are you guys going down this thing? And you looked at me and you go, it's, it's straightforward. <laughs> it is straightforward. It, it is a pretty There's nothing straightforward about it. <laughs> well, it's, it's anyways. <laughs> also today brought to you by Roka. They have completely reinvented eyewear. Uh, glasses optimized for not just the performance side, the casual side, also the prescription side. You kind of see them all around the way here. <sighs> I mean, these blue still, blue titanium aviators, stop. Gee. That's, that's some, right. That's some ball. I that's might ride the I shirt. Might, you going to the W, the rooftop pool at the W today? No, apparently we're doing a long ride after this. 
Well, no, after that, because I could. What if I wore like rocked these there? Stop it. <laughs> that'd be huh? uh, that'd be a uh, that'd be a uh, showstopper. <laughs> They're unbelievably lightweight. You literally forget you're wearing them. They do have the best optics on the market. Uh, they're crystal clear, fog resistant, and scratch resistant. And no matter how bad you're sweating, they never slip. Uh, it won't slip off your face, and they just stay right there. Hand built to order in our hometown of Austin, Texas. The Move listeners get 20% off. Just go to Roka, R O K A dot com. Again, that's Roka, R O K A dot com. Enter the code The Move for 20% off. Yohan, sorry to cut you off there. So, so um, what were you saying? I forgot what we were saying now. Okay. Yohan, George, I was George. asking you about, like, w- w- do we need to revisit our criticism of oh, uh, Jumbo's yeah. strategy because of the dominance in this time trial displayed by Jonas Vingegaard? No, no I, don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think, you know, today uh, Vingegaard was just on another level. He, he was riding like a man possessed. And um, he himself said that he was surprised that he was, you know, that he did the best time trial in his life. Well, I mean, I hope he did. I hope that's the best time trial in his life. Otherwise, it doesn't look really look good for the competition. Um, but um, from what I've heard, um, actually, the stage that Jumbo and Jonas have cir- uh, circled to be decisive and where they wanted to win the tour is tomorrow. Mm. Okay. Um, so <laughs> if he's well, on the level, let's, let's you know, it's after today was after the rest day, right? So we've seen. Uh, I, mean, I, I guess you also also the images of you know Pogacar having fun, jumping in the pool, being super relaxed. We didn't see anything of that. Jonas yeah, Vingegaard. We didn't. We don't know what he did. Uh, something tells me that the day after the rest day, Pogacar was not at his best. Uh, but still, I don't think he would have ever been at the at the level of of Jonas Vingegaard today. That was just. A performance like what, of another level. Lance and I observed just even from the start, the aggression, uh, the difference between the aggression of the starts between Jonas and Pogachar. It was the first corner. Yeah. I think Jonas already put a couple seconds on him just in that Two first seconds, corner George. alone. I, I, I checked it. Two so, seconds. I mean, that indicates that he not only did he have every corner memorized, yeah. he was he he had uh, the the tactics to start hard hard and, mm-hmm. and get a gap early on. You and I pointed it out right away, like, holy shit, that's a big difference already, just in the start. You know, he was taking yeah. those lines like a, the best F1 driver on yep. the planet, yep. like perfect apex exit. Oh, my God. I mean, and, from a technical perspective, um, it was absolutely perfect. I mean, the downhill, and I think we saw on, on, on the telly, top speed was uh, over 80 kilometers an hour, which, of course, is over 50 an hour, which that means he's out in the bars. I mean, you have to really know what you're doing and know the road <laughs> yeah. and know the course. Think about it, I mean, folks. Uh, I can't understate it enough. I mean, or overstate it enough. I mean, that's that's that is mind blowing. He rode the the perfect race. Johan, um, I know there was a lot of talk at the start, like Pogacar changing bikes, Jonas maybe changing bikes. Then all of a sudden, Jonas is not changing bikes. He's starting with the time trial bikes on the outside of the bike rack, which indicates he's not going to switch bikes. Mm-hmm. But a team like Yumbo, I mean, they got a, a, a full time tactician on the squad. You're not going to tell me that they don't know within 1% the watts he can hold climbing in a time trial position. They know. I feel like they've known from day one that they were going to use that time trial bike. Yeah. What, what do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think so too. I think the, the, the problem that um, Pogacar and UAE had is, at least as far as I've seen, is that the time trial bikes of Colnago are two kilos heavier than the road bikes. Oof. You know, if you look at the way it's super aerodynamic, but there's there is a lot of material there on the there bottom. Is, yeah. And um, I think I don't th- I mean, it, I don't think it was a mistake. Um, it was just he was just not not in the in the same league as as Vingegaard today, you know, two seconds after 19 seconds in the first corner and then 22 seconds after seven kilometers. And it just kept going on. So you could clearly see in the demeanor the, uh, on the bike that. You know, Vingegaard was going to war. You know, and and Pogacar, he looked he looked okay, but the, I could not see any aggress- aggressive Boy, moods you, in it, in him like you, we normally see. And you would really see his face when they would um, zoom in on the time checks. And George and I mm-hmm. were just like, I mean, this is a time trial. It's a thirty minute time trial. You have to, I mean, you have to absolutely bury yourself. And we're watching, going, is he? Is that buried? I don't know. That doesn't look buried to me. 
Um, well, I, have a, I have a question for you on if, if the race was, if let's just say we were in that position, the race was going the way that it was going, even though the bike is heavier, um, would you have called an audible uh, during the race and said, no bike change? Or would you have stuck yeah, with the plan? Of course. Yeah, I, I, of I, agree, course. I agree with yeah. you. I, th- I think, uh, but first no of all, about it. first of all, the bike change is not, is not always straightforward. You, mm-hmm. It's really dependent and kudos to the mechanics. I mean, that you've got to get out of that car and get that bike off. I mean, if, if for, for some reason the latch or something is, and you can't get the thing off, it's a disaster. So yeah. there's, I mean, also th- if there's you, that. If you, but, look at the, if you look at the times on the, on the Côte de Domancy, so Vingegaard did six six forty seven. Simon Yates did seven twenty. Pogacar did seven twenty one. So I mean, he he uh, didn't yeah. he didn't do a great climb. You know, no. he, not not as you would expect from from Pogacar. And on top of that, uh, uh, I, I guess you have to factor in the 10, 15 second time loss of the bike change. But still, um, no, I think I think I would have said, okay, you know what, change of plans. We just keep going. I don't, Johan. Come on. I mean, this is not. This isn't. This is a rider's choice whether or not he's going to jump on that road bike. If if you if you told Lance in the middle of a time trial when you're at 190 heart rate that never mind, never mind, we're going to change the bike, he'd be really pissed, and I don't think he would listen. Well, if you're if you're behind, if you're yeah. behind, that you don't have the choice, George. Yeah. Well, I mean, I when they got oh, to you're the climb, lose another 15 seconds. When they got to the climb, I actually thought that Pogacar riding the way he has been riding up until now was going to chip away at that uh you know the time the time loss he had he had gotten already on that flat part yeah. but it went the opposite way i mean we were just scratching our heads the whole way up that mountain and, it was and, amazing and what I, uh vindigo did and i think johan has a story later about you george in in, in in some races in this particular region that we'll get to so it has something to do with sort of not listening that well but despite what everybody thinks <laughs> and despite what everybody thinks that they know uh, I actually listened to this man. So yes, if, if we would have been going and, and Johan says, hey, I, I think we need to scrap the bike change, just keep going, make the best of this. I, I, I wouldn't have questioned that. By the way, it's a time trial. There's no two-way radios in the time trial. It's a one-way radio. So if Johan comes over and says, look. No, no debate. Yep. So ha- numbers was, wise. Was, George, George doesn't look. I don't look, know. I don't, know. I don't agree. <laughs> Well, we know we know you don't agree. I mean, you didn't agree with me, George. On uh, <laughs> yes, on the, on and I, I still hold my stance on that one. So we'll have to we, discuss. We we'll have a discuss. Should, I guess we should tell that story now instead of coming back to it. I Go ahead. So. Th- this this came up on JB Squared because of the finish uh, on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. So um, I asked Make George. It quick. <laughs> I, I asked George yesterday if I mean I should I could have asked Lance also because he was he was in that race too. Uh, if if you remembered this climb, and he said, "No, nah, I don't remember it," and then I said, "Well, you know, 2005, last stage in the Dauphiné. Uh, so you went away with Jaroslav Popovic. Um, was the first year of Discovery Channel, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so we did this course, the a circuit in Salange, uh, five or six times. So we did five or six times the Côte de Domancy, this climb." And you guys went away, and it was clear that you were going to stay away. And then, uh, on in the on the last lap, George comes on the radio. Okay, who, who should win? Oh. You know, <laughs> and I said because, especially because, and this this point you don't forget. Leaving. Don't forget, I had won the prologue that in the beginning of the week as well. So I was a stage win <laughs> in already. Oh, you had a stage win. Yep. You already had this. It makes it even worse. I know. You. But I'm going to say now. <laughs> wow. God, we just handed so, George the gun. He just pulled the trigger yeah, by himself. So, so, so the fact that on the last two climbs, George, that I had to tell Popovich, okay, wait for George. And you guys, so two times he waited because he dropped you. I think it was one time. He didn't really drop me. Two, just two times. Harder. Two times. The last two times. <laughs> and then finally I said, well, you know, I think, I think Popo should win. You know, he's new to the team. We were going to need him in the Tour de France because he was going to be like our last guy before. Oh, you Lance. said that? My radio fell out that lap. And, and, then, and then George, <laughs> and then George uh, somehow was, you know, kind of convinced Popo, the young kid, to let him win. <laughs> Actually, no, that, now that part, that part, I will, I will uh, contest that part. I said, Popo. We're at the top of the clam. Let's sprint this shit out. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I knew I'd beat him in the sprint. So yeah, why? Yeah, okay, let, 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 let me reverse. Let me reverse the question. Okay, I had been on the team for 
10 years leading up to that. Makes, I helped a man no, no, win no, six no. Tour de France leading up disagree. to that. Why would I not want to win the fucking stage? <laughs> because you already seeing, won a stage. We're seeing a different side of George. This 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 could be, you know. You, were, you would be, George, I'm, I'm sorry, but you, there, I have to say, we, we can all laugh at there. You, you, uh, you disobeyed. Hey, I disobeyed, uh, and disobeyed. you know what? Disobeyed. You know what? I don't I actually don't don't I don't I don't regret that decision one bit. I, we had just met Popovich. I think I did training camp with him. I barely knew the guy. Really nice guy. He's still director of Trek. Uh, great director. Great, amazing career. But yeah, I felt that I needed that victory. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that's on the we're heels gonna, of Lance gonna, saying whatever Johan said in my ear. I did. Right. We're okay. going to agree to disagree, George. <laughs> well, plenty more. To That's talk, why we're all here. Plenty more to talk about this uh, absolutely amazing time trial day and also talk about tomorrow because that's, that's, um, well, there's, there's, I, 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 uh, this is about to get fun to watch as, as far as I'm concerned. But uh, before we do, today's show also brought to you by Eight Sleep. I've been on it about a week now. I mean, I got it a week ago. I talked about it. Uh, some days ago, uh, the level of, of detail uh, in, in this piece of technology, the ease at installing it, um, the accessibility and the, and the functionality of the app uh, it, it is amazing. And I, and I got Anna's totally hooked. Uh, so here we are in the middle of summer. Our, our room was hot last night. We don't have AC in our house up here in Colorado. This eight sleep mattress cover and, and the way that it cools uh, cools the core, cools the body, and really, um, and, and it, of course, is evidenced by data that I'm getting off the aura ring. Uh, unbelievable, uh, the, the the difference that it has made. Uh, the pod cover, sorry, the pod cover by Eight Sleep fits on any bed, just like a, fi a fitted sheet. It can cool down and warm up and adjust based on the phases of your sleep and the environment that you're in. I'm telling you. And George, you sent yours back to Greenville, I know, because you wanted to, as soon as you got back, you wanted to have that baby there. Yeah. Um, but but being able to cool the mattress down to, I think it's up to 55 degrees Fahrenheit, it, it's a game changer for what, for how you wake up. The other thing I've noticed is, is for whatever reason, my low back is all of a sudden feeling better. I don't know if it's because it I'm back in the gym. It wasn't you up Independence Pass yesterday. I know. I'm doing good. But it is a game changer. And when you if you folks are lucky enough to, to dive in here, uh, and I said it the other day, it's, they've done a hell of a job, um, from a user's experience on this product. It's almost like an Apple product. It's incredible. Uh, head on over to eight sleep.com slash the move. And you get to save 150 bucks on your first pod cover. Stay cool this summer with eight sleep now shipping within the USA, Canada, the UK, select countries in the EU and Australia. Again, that's eight sleep spelled out E I G H T sleep.com slash the move saves you 150 bucks. Also today brought to you by AG1, the daily foundation, foundational nutritional supplement that supports whole body health. I, I literally drink it every day. George, I just saw right before the show started, was drinking his. Um, both of us were tired of just taking so many supplements, and we wanted a single solution that supports our entire body and covers all the nutritional bases every day. Uh, we were looking after uh, and wanting better gut health, a boost in energy, immune system support, and you know, just sick of taking a whole bunch of stuff. And also... As I like to make fun of myself, I just I, I just don't eat enough of the stuff you're supposed to eat, the stuff your mama told you to eat. Uh, this solves for that. With every daily serving, I'm setting myself up for success with 75 high-quality ingredients that give us key daily nutrients. All of this for less than three bucks a day. Think about it. Take control of your health for less than three bucks a day. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D. And 10, not five, 10 free AG1 travel packs. Head on over to drinkag1.com slash the move. Again, drinkag1.com slash the move. Last one of the day, talking, talking about HVMN. Of course, our presenting sponsor this summer with Ketone IQ. HVMN launched the first drinkable ketone in 2017. Ketone IQ is their latest innovation on ketones with improved effectiveness, taste, and cost. Ketone IQ delivers clean fuel that can cross the blood-brain barriers, supplying your brain and body sustained energy, mental focus, and sharpness, putting you in flow, lasting for hours. You can save 30% off your first subscription order of Ketone IQ at hvmn.com slash the move. Again, that's hvmn.com slash the move. And our man, Michael. I think he's, time. he's still alive, so that's good. Still alive. I do want to give a quick shout out to my mom. It's her oh. birthday today, so happy birthday, happy Nana. Happy birthday, Mom. Te quiero. Enjoy your day. Uh, we miss you. 
And then uh, hope to see you soon. I'll see you next week, actually, when I get back to Greenville. Actually, no, they're going to Columbia when I get home, so I'm going to miss them. I won't see them for a couple of months, but happy <laughs> birthday, Mom. What else What else took out today? The, the Bad news up for, on the American front. Oh. Jorgensen dropped out. He had that. a muscle That's tear. Right. Oh. So we're going to miss him as well in the was race. Was he in that crash? With this, uh, the, I guess so. I was maybe. trying to read up on it, but uh, it's a bummer. Yeah. Die muscle tear. Damn. And that we is. don't normally spend a lot of time historically on the polka dot jersey on the show, but it's been kind of fun this year with Nielsen Palace in it for quite a while. But something interesting with Ciccone today. ciccone has been in the jersey. And of course, you know, even despite this being uh, a time trial, since it was such a hilly time trial and easy for them to really measure and time uh, the, 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 you know, the efforts up, up the hard climb, Ciccone actually had the fastest time up that, uh, that, that difficult climb, which, you know, I, I'm not, y'all know where I am on this thing, but I, I think days like that and things like that, I'm like, all right, that's cool. Yeah. I thought that was cool. By the way, it's not, that was, that was the whole, that was a whole project on in itself. You know, that so we saw Ciccone get on his climbing bike and then just went full gas on the, on the two and a half kilometer climb. And, and even if you take it easy exactly. uh, first, yep. I mean, yep. to beat these guys, yep. uh, you must be very strong to, to, to be you, able to do you that. You took the words out of my mouth, Johan. I mean, he could ride for the first five, six, seven miles as easy as you want, but to still ride faster than Jonas Vingegaard did, that is impressive. I don't yeah. care. And of course, Jonas Vingegaard starts going as hard as he can or close to. It's very impressive. No doubt. Yeah, there's no doubt he's on a, he's on a roll right now. He's gonna be tough to beat for that mountain jersey. Uh, come to Paris. Uh, I don't know, George. I don't know I about think. that, George. <laughs> oh, you thinking you thinking Jonas? We'll yeah, get it. I don't think. Yeah, I mean I tomorrow know. is tomorrow the the, okay. H, the 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 last climb HC double points forty yeah. points. Yeah, he's only Vingegaard's uh, only six points behind. Of course, yeah, but uh, well, agreed. Jonas is a better climber, but chicone has got a whole different strategy. Just needs to make the breakaways and get as many points yeah. as he can. Well, and Pogacar yeah. is not that far down either. So we'll, we, we shall see. I, the, I'm still in shock. Uh, just from I, what you witnessed. Yeah, today. just how, how, how level and equal the first two weeks of this tour has been. I didn't see that coming. That, that's, that was masterful. Well, Damn. even though we said P- Pogacar looked a little off, mm-hmm. still his time-wise, back, tell me if I'm wrong here, Johan, it was impressive. It's just Giannis was on another level. Look, the, yeah, the, I mean, yeah. Pogacar still puts, he still puts, uh, a minute 15 into, into Walt Van Aert, right. who went full gas, who actually went to try to win this time trial. Hmm. Um, I mean, if you see the differences, it's, you know, Pogacar puts a lot of time into the third, the fourth, the fifth. Uh, and then, yeah, Vingegaard is just in another league today. That was, that was, I mean, yeah, I did not see that coming at all. And we and we've talked about it for two weeks now. This because because we we pretty much knew that this was a two man race. But we've been spending a lot of time trying to figure out who's you know it's a big deal to I think two two things finish on the podium of the tour, but also finish top ten. But if we go back to the podium, uh, it's only separated by five seconds between Adam Yates and Carlos Rodriguez. Yeah, I mean mm-hmm. th- that's that that's a great race right there. Yeah, there's no doubt. The podium, third spot is going to be an incredible race all the way to the finish line. But we, we, we're only talking about the Tour de France here. Let's not forget the the year that Pogacar's had thus far. I mean, winning winning Amsel Gold Race, um, Tour of Flanders. Tour of Flanders. I mean, the, the year he's had up to date is just insane. So I'm just wondering, Johan, do, do, are they going to like take a step back and look at the year he's had and go, you know what, do we really want to win these races in the spring or do we really want to race the Tour de France? And do you think I it's think, affecting him now? I think, George, it, it comes down to, uh, first of all, I, kn- I know that, and Pogacar said this in an interview, that this year he absolutely wanted to win the Tour of Flanders. It was more for him, it was more important than the Tour de France. Um, what? <laughs> if you would ask his sponsors, I'm pretty sure they would disagree. Yeah. Uh, you know, for uh, them, it's the Tour. And yeah. um, I think, I think, Pogacar should take the traditional approach like Vingegaard did, you know, work towards your first peak being in June, July. Um, you can beat up, you can be up there in the classics. Um, but I would not, I mean, definitely not do Paris-Roubaix, not do milan San Remo, not do Tour of Flanders. I would do Amstel Gold, Lace, Liege, Lesch Wallon, you know, the, the, 
I would also love to know, are his numbers up to par? Are, are, is he doing as good of numbers as he's ever done in the Tour de France? Or are they? Yes, yes. They are. Yes. Okay, so, so yeah. Jonas is just better right now. Mm. George, if you look, I mean, now in, now we are in GC, we have we have Pogacar now at 148. The third is already almost at nine minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the, I think Pogacar is at his level. It's just that Vingegaard, first of all, he ha he was better than last year overall, but what he did today was unique. We will see also what happens tomorrow. You know, the day after time trial, sometimes certain people react differently. Mm -hmm. This is what, a huge effort on a time trial bike. Yeah, and what's for sure going to happen is Pogacar is not waiting until 1K to go anymore to attack. Well, He's going to have to attack... <clears throat> Early on, That's second well, to last yeah. climb, or, or just cause damage way before he's been doing well, it so far. So it's going to make the race well, then super perfect exciting. time to pull up tomorrow's profile because yeah. this this I totally agree with you, George. I mean th these uh, these fast accelerations at the very end are, are just not going to. This is a hell of a day. Um, yeah, fairly but, uh, fairly short. Uh, a category one, two category ones, and a category two. Then the HC, but. Uh, this is a beast of a day, and, and, and if Pogacar wants to still win the Tour de France, he's, he can't, uh, you know, we can't have these late attacks. He's going to have to animate the racing and go early. Well, he needs to. It, first uh, or, of his all, team, or his team has to, to, to go a lot earlier. Yeah, 5,400 5, meters of elevation. Dear tomorrow. God, that's 16,000 feet, folks. 16, this is the 16, hardest stage of the Tour by 16, far. 16,000 right? plus feet of, of total yeah. vert. That, by the way, George, just NJB, since you did it, that's four times up Independence Pass. Oof. And so, Johan, yeah. right now, you're director of UAE. Are you, after today's time trial result, are you taking a step back and go, you know what? I wouldn't mind seeing two of my guys on the podium instead of just one of them. So are you going to start saving oh. Adam Yates more now because of the time trial result, or are you going to still use him as a pawn to, to set up these attacks against I th go? I, th I think tomorrow, George, uh, it's not that easy for Pogacar, you know, me because he can't attack on the second last climb. There's no way. I mean, the, the last climb is 28 kilometers long, mm. and it goes to 2,300 meters. And that last, those last four or five kilometers are super, super steep. Um, Adam Yates, I think, is going to have to be the same as always. He's going to have to at some point take over from Jumbo. Jumbo is going to set a pace that suits them, and uh, and Adam Yates will have to launch like an acceleration and then Pogacar will need to try to attack um, maybe with 10k from the top I don't know but they're in a difficult position I mean, so do you think they sacrifice Adam Yates' third spot or potential third spot finish in Paris doesn't really matter I mean it doesn't really matter if they want if they're third I mean they want to try to win I mean at least that's what I this how, yeah. how I would think and it's all, I mean, it's all or nothing, you know, you have to risk to lose everything in order to have one chance to win. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen those images of uh, Pogacar's face on, you know, being broadcast to the buildings after the win. Like it's, it's a big deal in the UAE to, to, to have the winning yeah. rider and yeah, has for been. Sure. And, and um, as we've also discussed a lot on here, boy, that the team morale tonight for Jumbo Visma, by the way, they jumped into first on, on the team classification. Mm. Um, mm. But uh, the, that, it, just compare and contrast Jumbo and UAE, the dinner table tonight, knowing tomorrow is the hardest stage of the tour. Boy, this starts mm. to feel really good. And, and yeah, look, you got enough time. You, you can, you don't need, you don't need to be, you need to be nervous because it's a hard day, but you don't need to be nervous. Like I've talked a lot about why are you letting him sit on your wheel? He's going to jump you. He's going to gain a second here. So you don't have to be nervous about that anymore. Now you just have to ride smart, yeah. ride as a team, stay in control. Even if, you know, th those little, those little five, 10 second things are not going to matter now. And, and that, that for, you know, guys two through eight, uh, sitting at the dinner table and going to bed tonight, that feels pretty damn good. Yeah. I mean, guys like uh, Kel Kelderman and uh, Sepp Kuss, I mean, all they have to do now is just, just, even if even if Pogacar attacks early on, they just need to ride their their tempo, keep them as close as possible. Like you said, Lance, it's a much different position that they're in now. And let's not forget Saturday. Not to jump too far ahead, of course, tomorrow, uh, you know the 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 Queen stage, and then we have some some um, days that are not going to affect the GC most likely. Uh, but then Saturday's a beast. So the, Pogacar's got two days. He's got tomorrow, and and yeah, maybe chips away tomorrow. And Saturday's also. Uh, really nasty, but time's running I out. I think, I think that we can 
we can uh, we can still expect tomorrow an attack from Jonas Fingergaard. <laughs> Did you guys listen to Sepp Kuss interview? No. no. Okay. He said that tomorrow his job is going to be like always. And and that's why I say they had identified tomorrow's stage as the crucial stage to win the tour. Hmm. Um, you know, he's he has the momentum now. <laughs> uh, if he recovers well from the time trial, which I, I, I believe he will, you know, because if a guy's on that that kind of form, there's not a lot that's, that's slowing him down, you know. Um, so we could potentially see again what happened on Hotakam last year, you know, <laughs> that um, Vingegaard just puts the, the the last nail in the coffin. Wow, that would be something. Mm. All right, let's do Ventum trivia, and we do have some good images coming. We have a great image of Johan, the historical one coming up, and, and Jonah Tolley sent something. But uh, an NS1 is up for grabs. We're going to you know, give away one along with Ventum on the last day. And all you got to do is answer these questions, email them in, you go into the drawing. All right. Uh, yesterday's question was who holds the longest time span between winning tours? Did you know that answer? Mm -hmm. the, the answer was Gino uh, Bartali, mm. which uh, 10 years apart. Wow. 38 and 48. Today's well, question. There was a there was a war in between. Yeah, right, right, and some missed tours, <laughs> right? Uh, who is the only person to run a sub four minute mile and complete the tour? I would expect you to know. That <laughs> yeah, answer. we've talked yeah. about that one. Yeah. If you haven't been listening, then shame <laughs> on you. Uh, <laughs> send your answer to trivia at ventumracing dot com, and we're going to show you one of these bad boy NS ones here in a minute. Uh, now we'll pull up that image uh, of Johan 28 years ago in yellow in Damn. a time trial. Wow. Yeah, wow. that's look at that. Look at the skin suits. Look at that skin suit. I mean, compared to today's equipment, you know, and yep. look at the chain, man. I was, I was, <laughs> no, I, 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 I by got the way, this, by I the way, I, those skin suits that they're wearing are 3,000 euro skin suits. Wow. Really? Yeah. Those are, <laughs> So Where, the, was that a, a backup chain in case you needed to do a roadside <laughs> repair? Or? But if you look, if you look, uh, you know. So I was, uh, I was definitely, I was not the leader of the team, and um, so I was going a lot. It was in Belgium. It was crazy. I mean, I was deaf after the time trial, um, but I didn't even have a team director behind me. It was a huh. year because you know the, the the directors were riding with, I think, with Zula and Brookink or something like that. Hmm. And I didn't, I didn't have, a, if you look at the picture, I didn't have a spare Tantra bike. If you look at the picture, there's a normal road bike there with uh, aero bars. Did you but, have any radios back then? No, right? Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But you did have a spare chain in case something went wrong, which JB <laughs> so, so uh, perfectly pointed out. That is, that, that rivals George's bling by far. It does fact. actually. I, I like that. The little trivia. You I asked, my... I asked Johan about that once and, and your, your father was a jeweler, correct? Exactly. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I was at the source of the gold. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't don't talk about that. People think you know it's been a rough decade. You know, don't talk about your uh, <laughs> your bling, your access to all those jewels. And <laughs> well, that was back in the days. So, you know, it's it's been rough for everybody, including for me, Lance, as you as you know very well. So. I'm well aware. Joe Natoli <laughs> sent in something we've been talking about: Spencer, the propeller head, uh -huh. oh, and uh, his calculator and all that. And so this is a a new one from Joe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. So, and you got, of course, you got to be watching this to see it, but uh, uh, we'll post it up on socials too. Join the We Do Propeller Head Club, hosted by Spencer, the King of Stats, Martin, Dorks Unite. Join the coolest club on the move. I mean, there's a lot of things. Be the hit of the party. Impress all your other riders in the Gruppetto. Learn worthless stats to impress the few friends you have. <laughs> Fixie riders, join for free. Oh, join now and get a Weedoo slide ruler and pocket protector. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> Uh, Spencer's got to be going, what has happened to my life? Please tell me. Joining <laughs> I, I, I think no. his wife uh, watches the live show sometimes. Please tell me she's watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, another another couple of images real quick, just to throw a bone to my daughter. You yes. get, we like to brag about our kids. My daughter picked up another win, wake surfing over the weekend. Awesome. Those who don't know, she, uh, she's been wake surfing as a pro for 10 years and 
has two world titles and women's pro, but she's getting back in the game. She's been coaching for three or four years and out of competition, but now she's jumping back in, getting kind of excited about it. And if y'all, I've seen Raleigh uh, wakeboard. I've first of all, well, George wakeboards a lot because he's wake surf. Uh, wake, yeah. wake surf. What that's it shows you how much I do it, but. Uh, it's it's hard. Like I can get up and kind of. You stay got up right away. Yeah, I, first try. Because I, I, I grew up water skiing, so I, that dynamic I got I, I've got down. But once you get up and how, um, just how you sort of feather it, feather the wave and the boat, and and stay within that little sweet spot, it's hard. And then shit, all of a sudden Raleigh's like, I don't know what, like, like it's just uh, jumping, know, a swivel, just stuff. going all around. Yeah, so yeah. If, if yeah, whoa. And now we have a reveal. Oh, what? Your new NS1. Oh, finally. Oh, dun, dun, dun. Which, wait till you You know, wouldn't see yesterday have been a great day to reveal that thing, climbing up Independence Pass? <laughs> Not that I was, but what? I got a new, finally? What do I have, like a Texas flag on mine? George, of course, has the Colombian theme. The uh, it's George, JB, the entire Weedoo <laughs> team. I'm so bummed I'm not going to be on the show this year. I'm in France, about the tour. I just climbed Cote de Forclas. Oh. You can see this beautiful <laughs> scenery behind <laughs> me. But I got to keep the tradition going. I bring gifts. Two years ago, conditioner. Lance's <laughs> hair, it's never looked back. Last year, I brought my favorite scent. George was over the moon. <laughs> Lance, I... Be honest, I saw you handing it to George off camera. Did it hurt my feelings? Yes. Have I gotten over it? No. So this year, I'm going traditional. Enjoy your gift, buddy, and see you guys soon. Wow. Tia cracks dude. me up. He, he's over there in France with his brother. His brother's got the exact same hair. Yeah. Bring it on in. Oh, Bring boy. In. You'll have wow. to like, hold it up behind us. Okay. It's gorgeous. And we do orange, huh? Here you hold that side. Ooh, that's nice. That is. Yeah. Oh, George even. George a little jealous. We yeah. got the FNS wow. logo on the back. Got the we do logo on, on there, huh? Woo! Might have to go do the pass again. <laughs> mm, give that a couple days. Thanks, Dio. That is that that thing's rad. Damn. All right, we'll hold off on questions today. We had a lot to, to cover, and uh, don't want to take up too much of everyone's time. But if you do want to send in anything, the move at we do dot team. Tomorrow's another big day. Boy, tomorrow, yeah. I guess I guess it can go, uh, but the way Johan lays it out, I mean, if that's the stage that Jumbo has, has picked as the day to make a difference, I mean, uh, you know, I, I kind of you want to see a day where where Pogachar just puts it all on the line. I mean, wow, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. I mean, if as for the for the fan at home, which of course we are, that'd be amazing, and get some guys on the ropes. Um, he will he, try. Uh, like he doesn't just sit back. Look, you have to feel no, good. The, you have to feel good to try. And they get the the, 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 the Pogachar we saw. Hold today. on, hold on, y'all. The Pogachar <laughs> we saw today didn't look like a guy that could try. Yeah. Now, wanting to try is one thing. You know, I want to do a lot of things. <laughs> well, not only that, not only will he will he try. We know he's going to try, but. Might as well go for the stage win, too, if he's going to try. The guy that we're coming up on the last week, everybody's in the hurt locker. Might as well take the race, control of the race, and uh, not, one, go for an attack, try to get time back on Jonas, but also go for the stage win. Hmm. All right, well. But what happens, George, if both of them come together to the finish? Well, hey, he's gonna, will, he's gonna be will Jonas let him win? Yeah. Well, he's, he's faster than him in a sprint, Pogachar is. I mean, that's true. Just, that's let him, true. just let him win. Yeah. Yeah. You agree that he yeah. would let just he would let, just said, uh, yeah, yeah, of course, hundred percent. Why, okay, why, yeah. why even sprint? There's certain mountaintop finishes. You, you've said you never give gift that one. Well, in, in hindsight, <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, what's the big one in the middle of the country? That's the, probably the hardest and most famous one. Um, the one I think about at least once a week. Um, <laughs> fuck. Richard Veronk and Marco Pantani. Anyways, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. Tomorrow.